while Malaysian government implemented the movement control order as the COVID-19 pandemic worsened in March 2020. School pupils had to stay at home and teachers had to start online teaching. Under the leadership of Dato Dr. Ma Hang Soon, the Deputy Minister of Education Office has launched Easy Learning Web. Pupils are able to continue learning from home through the Easy Learning Facebook page and YouTube channel. Easy Learning Web is an interactive learning platform. Pupils are welcome to interact with the teachers during lessons via the chat room section. Real learning can only take place when there is an active two-way communication. We continue to improve ourselves to keep abreast with the latest trend in education. Let's venture into the world of learning together with Easy Learning Web. Easy Learning Web welcomes you. Okay, hi, good evening teachers, pupils, and viewers of Easy Learning Web. Welcome to the 10 Spark in the Dark Learn English Online Series. I'm Miss Caroline Tam from SK Kampong Tebaang Daro, the moderator of the day. Before we start our lesson today, here are some reminders for you. Pay full attention throughout the lesson. Take notes on a paper, in a book, or using a pencil. Respond to comment to question by typing in the chat box or comment section. Comment politely and positively. Use earphone and adjust video resolution for better audio and viewing experience. Jot down the three passcode mentioned throughout the lesson for certification. If you haven't liked the Easy Learning Web Facebook page, Please like it now by clicking on the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel too. You will get notification for our upcoming, upcoming learning series. Today, we are going to learn about traditional headgears from around the world. Mr. Liu will show you different kinds of headgears. Let me introduce our speaker for today's lesson. He is Mr. Liu Kaid. He is a UM graduate in biotechnology and is trained as an English teacher at IPG IPGK Darul Aman. He has seven years of teaching experiences and is currently teacher, teaching at SJKC Nam Kiong Kuala Lumpur. He is a novelist, YouTuber, as well as a passionate educator. So let us begin our lesson. The floor is yours, Mr. Liu. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, hello. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Okay, let's start. Uh, can you hear me? Can I? Okay. Mm. 
Once upon a time in Imperial China. In the palace. The Emperor say, Mr. Liu, I receive a lot of complaints about your terrible performance as an officer of education. I'm sorry, Your Majesty. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me, Your Majesty. I'm sorry. Long live, Your Majesty. The emperor say again, Mr. Liu, you are fired. Remove your Usama immediately. Please forgive me, Your Majesty. I will remove my Usama immediately as my apology. Do, do, do. All right, so that's all for my show, a short show. Today. Okay. So just now, uh, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just now you have heard a special term. Okay, Wu Sa Mao. Okay, what is Wu Sa Mao? What is this? Wu Sa Mao. Okay, before I explain this term, okay, let me go into my topic. Okay, what is headgear? Okay, what is headgear? What is a headgear? Okay, headgear is the name given to any element of clothing which is worn on one head. Okay, so means that clothing on one's head means headgear. All right, so pupils, so can you give me an example? Okay, give me an example. Okay, what is headgear? Anyone can tell me. So I give the first example. Yeah, cap. Okay, how about others? What example? Yeah, somebody say hat. Okay, hat. And then? Okay, hat. Other than hat? Helmet, very good. Helmet, also one of the headgears. Head, helmet, head, helmet. Okay, most of you write head and helmet. Okay, yeah. So like this one, cowboy head. You know cowboy, uh, cowboy head. So cowboy head, also one of the headgear. So this, this one, cap. Okay, cap is a headgear. So I'm wearing the cap. Okay, so this one is songkok. Okay, Song Kok is for our Muslim friends. Okay, this one is for uh, religious purpose. And this is police hat. Okay, police hat um, is for service purpose. Okay, it's used by policemen. How about others? Yeah, cowboy hat. Yeah, Song Kok, yes. Okay, how about this one? Helmet, very good. Just now, uh, some of you have written down helmet. Uh, helmet is uh, to protect our head when we are riding a motorbike. So the last example is this one, straw hat. Okay, straw hat. Okay, straw hat. No, this one is straw hat. Okay. All right, so straw hat means chao mao la, straw hat. I mean, in Chinese, chao mao. So, Normally, uh, your grandparents, they have straw hat. Uh, when they are work under a hot sun, so they are wear a straw hat, okay? To protect them from hot sun. Yeah, straw hat. Okay. All right, so this is the examples. All right, so now we look at purposes. Okay, so what is, what is the purpose for us to wear a headgear? Okay, what are the purposes that you know for wearing headgear? Anyone can tell me what are the purposes? Uh, you can write down in the chat box. 
Yes. Anyone can tell me the purpose for us to wear a headgear? To what? To protect. Okay, to protect. Uh, to protect our head. Okay, the most importantly is to protect our head. Uh, okay, the first one, to protect our head. Uh, because head, because inside our head, we have brain, we have a lot of sensory organs. Uh, so it's very important for us to protect our head. Secondly, we can keep our hair tidy. Yeah, to protect our head. Yeah, Chong Yu third, correct? Protect our head. Okay, secondly is to keep our hair tidy. Okay, to keep our hair tidy uh, means that our hair will not look very messy. Okay, some some say what? Style. Wow, style. Stylish. Style means to show fashion. Uh, fashion. Some hair is very special one. Uh, where it looks very string one. Uh, so it is a fashion uh, from ancient until modern. They got many kind of fashion. Okay, later I will show you some, some fashion. Okay, some special headgear. Yeah, style. This is style. To avoid sunshine. Yeah, to avoid sunshine is more or less like to protect our head. Yeah, to protect us. Okay, to avoid sunshine. Yeah, very good. Yeah, to keep our hair tidy. Okay, the last but not least is uh, some headgear is mainly for religious purposes. Religious means 宗教, uh, religious purposes, like uh, just now that we mentioned one, Song Kok. Uh, so this one is for religious purpose. All right, so now I'm going to introduce, okay? Today, I'm going to introduce some traditional headgear with all of you. So get ready, boys and girls. Okay, if you get ready, you just press one. Okay, press one means you are ready to know more headgears. Okay, yes, okay, okay, one, one, one. Okay, yeah, so everyone get ready, yeah? So what are the traditional headgear you will learn today? Okay, so this one I just, okay, take off. Ah, before I start, very important, passcode. The first passcode, okay, so it's headgear, all right? Of course, it's our topic today, headgear. So you just drop it down. Ah, so later when you submit your uh, attendance form, so you can uh, just fill in, okay, headgear. All right, this is the first passcode. Okay, what are the first headgear that you will learn is Wu Sa Mao. Just now, the emperor, he asked me to remove my Wu Sa Mao. Okay, so what is Wu Sa Mao? Okay, now I will ignore the emperor. I will wear again the Wu Sa Mao. Okay, so this is Wu Sa Mao. All right. Okay, before I start, let me ask you a geographical question. Okay, anyone can tell me, okay, what is this country? Okay, this is the country where Usama is originated from. Ah, tell me what the country name. Okay, right in the chat box. Yes, it's a very big country. You can see the map. The group is showing that it's a very big, huge country. Yeah, China. Yes, correct. China, in China. Okay. Yes, China. Okay, but Usamao is, yeah, it's from China, but not modern China. Okay, is in Imperial China. Okay, what does it mean? Imperial China. Okay, Imperial China means when China was ruled by emperors. Okay, emperors, Huang Di. Uh, when emperor ruled China, so we call Imperial China. Because, but now China have no emperor, okay? All right, so we now we go back to the past, go back to the ancient China. Let's go. Okay, so this is Usamao. Okay, so 
Hubert. Okay, boys and girls, you can read after me. Okay, Wu Sa Mao is a Chinese form of hat, which was typically worn by government officials. Uh, government officials means Gao Guan, Guan, uh, Guan Bengawai, okay, officials. In the imperial period, and particularly two dynasties, okay. Uh, first is Song, okay, Song, not Song, uh, Song, uh, Song and Ming, okay. Song and Ming in Chinese is Song Chao and Ming Chao, okay. So this Usama is worn by those officials during Song and Ming dynasty, okay. Okay, so how does it look like? Yeah, Usama is consisting of a black hat. Okay, it's a black hat. You can see a black hat with two wing-like flaps. Okay, this one is look like a wing. Okay, a wing. Okay, of thin and over. It's over shape. You can see it's a like a uh, over rectangular shape. Bought on each side. So it's like this one. Okay, uh, Usama. Okay, so this is a portrait. Uh, it's a portrait of uh, ancient Chinese official wearing a Usama. Uh, and the costume uh, is this one. This one is an uh, official costume. I mean, I'm wearing the official costume. All right. Okay. Yeah. So let's learn something. Okay. How did Usama create? Okay. How did it create? Okay, who create or who designed this Usama? Okay, the answer is the founder of Song Dynasty, Emperor Taizu. Uh, so he designed this, this Usama so that during the assembly, okay, during the assembly with the emperor, uh, where the all officials gathered, gathered in the palace, uh, so he official could be kept apart. Uh, keep apart by these flags so would not whisper to each other ah so what can you relate it's a social this what social distant thing ah so this emperor okay he was very clever so because he wanted to avoid those official chit chatting Okay, talking some gossip, talking back, uh, talking some bad things about emperor at the back. So he designed this Usama so that all officials have to stay alone. I mean, within a distance. Okay, apart. Okay, apart by the, the flat. So the official they have they had no chance to whisper to each other. Uh, so this is a, a manner lah, to manner to respect the assembly, uh, respect the emperor. Okay. Uh, so this is the, the the designer of the Usama from the Emperor uh, Taizu. Okay, so these are some portraits of ancient Chinese official wearing Usama. Okay, yeah, this is some historical portraits. Ah, this one is a modern picture. Okay, in the ancient China, ordinary citizens were not allowed to wear this headgear. Ah, this hacker only for official. It's exclusively for official. Okay, unless okay, if other if normal people want to wear, unless she is having wedding ceremony. Okay, ah, so if he having ceremony, so he had a chance to wear usama. Okay, you can see the bride. Ah, he's wearing the usama. So today, the Usama, the term Usama is still frequently used at modern Chinese slang. So this term referring to government, government post, okay, government post. So Usama become a metaphor, become a, like a simile, lah, uh, like a bi -yu. So it, it means that government post, okay, understand? Uh, so when, when somebody say, okay, my Usama is removed, means, uh, he got fired. He got fired by his superior. Okay. All right. So this one is Usama. Uh, this one is some picture of traditional Chinese wedding. Uh, so you can see the meal. He wear the Usama. Okay. 
Yes. All right. So let's see some handsome picture. Okay. So this one is Mr. Liu wearing Usama. Uh, this one is Mr. Liu wearing Usama again with the costume, with the official costume. All right. Okay. Not handsome. Okay. Ah, uh, this one is uh how to say uh, is a byproduct okay it's a special product inspired by usama okay creative social distancing hat okay this inspired by usama to stop the spread of covid 19 uh, because in this covid era so we always focus on uh social distancing uh, we have to keep our body social distancing or physical distancing okay we have to distance from our friends distance from other stranger okay so how do you make yourself distant from your classmate so okay this one is from thailand okay so the people of thailand they they make a, a facial together with a too long wing uh, so it look like usama okay so to keep social distancing, uh, this one is in China and yeah, it's in China and Thailand. Okay. So I think this one is one of the inspiration. Okay. By Usama. Okay. It's the idea came from ancient China. Uh, so can stop the spread of COVID-19. All right. Okay. So this one is the first one. Okay, Usama. Okay, remember this is Usama. Okay, so second one. Okay, second one is Yugion. Okay, Yugion. Okay, it's a it's a it's a different language, uh, not English, uh, Yugion. Okay, so let's guess. Where does it come from? Okay, so geography, geography questions again. Okay, tell me what is this country? What does Yugion come from? Okay, right in the chat box. What is this country? A uh, small country, uh, not very big country. Okay, what is this country? Oh, Ong Hong Shen, Korea. Ryan also right Korea. Which Korea actually got two Koreas? Okay, ah, South Korea. Yeah, Korea. Where you see also. Return South Korea, okay. Yeah, Korea. Yes, very good. It's South Korea. Ah, South Korea. So the country is South Korea. Ah, Han Guo, South Korea. Okay, not not the the Northern Korea. Okay, South Korea. Okay, so this is Yugyeon. Okay, Yugyeon. Okay, so I remove my Wusam out. Okay, so now is this one. Okay, so Yugyeon. Okay, let read, read with me, read after me. Okay, Yugyeon or known as Ru Jing. Okay, Ru Jing in Chinese is a traditional meal headgear made from black fabric. Okay, black fabric. It was usually worn with Confusion clothing in the ancient China. I will see Yugyeon and Usama, they are more or less same. They came from ancient China. But today, okay, Yugyeon, it become a Korean headgear. Okay, why? Let's see the reason. Okay, so these are some history. In the 14th century, so the kingdom of Korea adopted this headgear and call it Yugyeon. Okay, Yugyeon means Confucian student head. Okay, do you know who is Confucian? Confucian is Kongzi. Kongzi. Okay, Kongzi, Kongfuzi, Confucian. Okay. Besides studying Confucianism, is also worn during ancestral rites. Ah, so this is Okay, Yugyeon. Okay, this is a portrait of a Korean, uh, a Korean scholar, a Korean Confucian scholar. So, uh, he is wearing a Yugyeon, and this picture is 
is drawn by the ancient Korean artists. Okay, is a uh, there are some scholar. Okay, there are scholar. They were discussing something. So all of them were wearing yugyeon, and this is a Korean drama. Ah, uh, is happened. I mean, the background is uh, during the kingdom of Korea. So the character is wearing. Okay, all the characters are wearing yugyeon. Okay. All right. Okay, so these are the pictures. So today's many South Korean, they are still wearing their traditional costume, uh, including yugyeon, and practice their Confucian tradition and ethics. Uh, you can see the picture. So this is the children in South Korea. So all of them wearing their traditional costume. So they are wearing their this headgear yugyeon. So they are. Paying respect to our teachers, and this one is uh, undergraduates in university in the Korea. Okay, this one is so uh, some kids uh, so they are wearing yugyeon and wearing their traditional clothes, and this these are some adults, so they are practicing their Confucian traditions. Okay, means Lu Jia Si Xiang Confucian tradition. There are some Confucianism. Okay, ethics is some ethics means. Uh, li yi, ah. li yi, you know, li yi, li mao. Okay, so this one is traditional um, practices. Okay, all right, so this is Yu Gyeon. Okay, let's look at some handsome picture of Mr. Liu wearing Yu Gyeon's. Okay, in the school. Okay, can you believe it or not? <laughs> I wear this headgear when I was teaching. Okay, long time ago lah. Okay, because now, uh, now is how to say a uh, PDPR stay at home. Okay, uh, so uh, last time I did wear this headgear. Okay, when I'm teaching. Okay, this one is the whole set. Okay, this is the whole set. You get together with the confusion clothing. Ah, uh, this is a whole set. Ah, uh, when when doing some confusion, uh, how to say ah. Uh, the Confucianism practicing, so you have to wear a whole set of this costume. Okay, you go on together with this. Uh, we call it some shen yi, shen yi. Okay, all right. Yes. Now it's very important. Important words. Passcode number two. You go on. You go on. Okay, so jot it down. You go on. Okay. All right. So. Jot down ah, you go on second passcode. Ah, uh, why the first one? The first one is ah uh, headgear. Second one is you go on. All right, now we come to the third one is udang. Okay, udang, not udang, not udang ah, uh, prona no. Okay, udang, udang. Okay, what is udang? Okay, let's guess. Where does udang come from? Okay, anyone? Ah, so try to use your geographical knowledge. Okay, what country is it? What country? Okay, right in the chat room. What country? What country? This is what country? It is our neighboring country. Yes. Okay, yeah, Hong Xuan, very good. Indonesia, Indonesia, okay, Indonesia, okay. Thailand, oh no, Thailand is uh, at the north. Wow, Chan In Ling, okay, very good. Yeah, somebody write the very specific answer. Yes, the answer is Indonesia, but there are the, there is a very another one more answer. Which part of Indonesia? Which part? Just now somebody have written. Which part of Indonesia? Okay, it's a very beautiful island. Start with B one B. Yeah, yes. Chan Enling, very good. Bali, Bali, Bali. Yes, Bali Island. Okay. All right. So let's go together. Okay. Let's go to Bali Island together. Okay. Udeng. Okay. So. Okay, Udeng. 
All right. Okay, so Udeng. Okay, Udeng is a square of cloth folded and tied around the head. Ah, uh, it's a tied around the head. It, uh, it has always been an iconic picture for men in Bali, Indonesia. Ah, uh, not not the whole Indonesia, but only in Bali. Ah, uh, Bali is a quite a special island. Okay, because if you went to if you go to Bali before, you will know that Bali is very different from other parts of Indonesia. Okay, all right. So let's see. Okay, Balinese men wear udang when taking part in a religious ceremony, whether in a temple or at a graveyard. You can see. So when the Balinese Balinese men, uh, only for men, ah, uh, this is men headgear. So when they when they uh, go to a temple or a graveyard to, to have a religious ceremony, so they will wear udang. Okay. So the udang is an expression of nikat mana. Okay, this is their language. Okay, nikat mana. Nikat mana means control of the mind. Ah, uh, you have to control the mind. Okay, so we cannot let our mind distracted. So the human mind control the senses. Ah, uh, if we control our mind, means that we can control all the senses. So it's very important. So when when going to the holy place. Controlling the mind is essential. Means is a very important thing to do. Okay, so they wear udang to control their mind. All right. So this one is udang. Okay, the udang is not just tied around the head randomly. Ah, uh, not just simply tied. Not simply tied. Ah, uh, no. Okay, there is a pattern. Ah, uh, what pattern? The right fold. Okay, the right fold must be higher. Okay, the right fold must be higher than the left. Ah, uh, there's a pattern. You cannot simply type. Okay, so the right fold have to be higher than the left. Okay, because it symbolizes the supremacy of good behavior over bad. So it means that right is good. Ah, uh, left is bad lah. Because right means right lah. Okay, right is Right side is right way. Ah, uh, right means good behavior. Okay, good behavior over bad. So this one is udang. Okay, and the knot knot means uh, 结啊 This thing, this knot. Okay, the knot has to be in the middle. You can see the knot. This one, the knot must be in the middle of the forehead. You have to tie in the middle one. Okay, why? Because it's believed that mind focus came from there. Ah,、uh, all the mind came from here, came from the middle. Ah,、uh, so this is their belief. Okay, so there's a lot of meaning one. Ah,、uh, so headgear, it it has a lot of meanings. Okay, so these are the pictures of the president of Indonesia, Jokowi. So he is wearing udang. Okay. Okay, so some. And some picture of Mr. Liu wearing udang. Okay, ah,、uh, actually udang in Bali is very common. You can buy everywhere. Ah,、uh, it's like a souvenir. And and this udang is a is a how to say a、uh, user friendly. You know, you tie one. It's it's tight. It's very tight. You just put on your head like this. Okay, ah,、uh, so it's very tight. Okay, you need you need to take out and tie again. Don't need. Okay, so this one is, ah,、uh, this is I I bought in Bali lah. All right, so this one is udang. Okay, now, ah,、uh, the next one. Okay, how do we pronounce? How do we pronounce? Beret, beret. Okay, no. Okay, so this pronunciation is very special. Is beret? Okay. Beret, beret, okay, beret, 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 okay, beret, okay. Why is so special? Because beret came from this country, okay. Come, okay, boys and girl, let's tell me, okay, guess what is this country? Wow, very fast, French. Okay, good. 
somebody write. Northern French. Wow, so specifically, okay. okay. What country? Just a country name. Oh, Northern Europe. Northern Europe. French. Okay, I want a country. Country name. Yeah, the answer is. Okay, you can look. You can see there's in in Europe. So yes, French. French. So beret or beret is a French word. Okay, because. Normally the T uh, is silent one in French. Uh, like, 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 like the word, like the ballet. Okay, so this is beret. Okay. Okay, now this is yeah, next one. Okay, let's see. Okay, this one is very hard to weigh sometimes. Okay, yeah, more or less like this. Okay. Yeah, is there's a ship one, okay? Ah, like this, ah, okay, like this. Okay, so beret, yeah, beret is a soft, round type of head. Yeah, soft and round. So it is similar to cap, but without the pig, okay? There's no pig. So berets are usually made of felt or similar material, okay? Felt means that, okay, it's very smooth one, okay? So berets are often one in French, okay? It's from French. Okay, here are some histories. Okay, his, historians shows that a beret has been worn since the Bronze Age across Europe. Okay, it was the traditional headgear of shepherds. Okay, shepherds, shepherds from Southern France. So mass production of berets began in 19th century France. Uh, so actually this beret is from Shepherd, okay? In France, in Southern France. Okay, the black beret was once considered the national cap of France. Ah, you can see this is, this was national cap of France, but now it is no longer as widely worn as it once was but it still remains a strong symbol of local identity in the southwest of French. So when when you see a beret you can straight away think of oh this is France. This is symbol of local identity of French. Okay. Red color. Yeah there, there are a lot of color one black, red, green, okay? There are a variety of colors, okay? All right, so let's look at this one. So today, the beret is considered the headgear of creative people, firm directors and artists. Ah, so it is not only a traditional headgear, it become a fashion. It become a fashion for this group of people, uh, creative people, Firm director and artists such as August Rotin and Pablo Picasso. Uh, these are artists. Uh, you know Picasso, right? Picasso is a famous artist. So when you wear this beret, people will think you are artist. Wow, this is a drawer, artist, firm director. So it's a it's a how to say it's a stereotypical symbol. Okay. Ready? Uh, wait. Okay. All right. Because I saw my slide disappear just now. All right. Okay. So this one. Okay. Do you know who he is? Uh, who he is? Okay. Who he is? Okay. I'll give you a tips. He is a firm director is same famous as James Cameron. I think year five pupils, you have learned that, right? James Cameron. Uh, this one also very famous. Okay, what are the firms he had directed before? The answer is Jurassic Park. Anyone can tell me Jurassic Park? Uh, anyone can tell me who, who is he? Who is he? Steve, Steve. Okay, yeah, is, you got, they are Steve something, Stephen. Stephen? Steven, 
Okay. Ah, Steven Spielberg. Yeah, Cindy Law. Yes, very good, Cindy Law. Yeah, Steven Spielberg. Okay, Steven Spielberg. Okay, he is Steven Spielberg. Okay. So he is one of the greatest film directors in the world. Ah, you can see film director they love to wear beret. Okay, so these are the films he had directed. E.T. Yeah, this one is from my my age one. E.T. is very old movie. Ah, Jurassic Park series, Jurassic Park one, two, three, Jurassic World one, two, three. Ah, so this one is from Steven Spielberg. And the last, uh, this one is very famous one. This is my favorite movie. Okay, Artificial Intelligence. Okay, so these are from Steven Spielberg. Okay. Okay, next. Okay, next icon. Okay, do you know who is his? Okay, who he is? Do you know who he is? Okay, try to guess. A famous Japanese comic drawer, manga, manga drawer. Do you know manga, Japanese comic? Okay, uh, what? Anyone can tell me? Okay, he is very famous Japanese uh, manga artist. Okay, nobody know uh, because this one is long ago. Uh, okay, so he is. Fujiko F. Fujio. Fujiko F. Fujio. Ah, anyone know what character she had created? A very famous one. What, what Mon? At the back one, got a Mon one, M O N Mon. Wow, yes. Okay, good. Dora A. Mon. Dora A. Mon. Uh, Dora A. Mon. Somebody write Dora A. Mon. Okay, Dora A. Mon. Okay. Uh, no, no Pokemon, uh, not Digimon, okay? Doraemon, okay? So, she is, okay, the author of Doraemon. So, uh, in Chinese, it's called Teng Zi F. Wu Xiong, okay? Fujiko F. Fujio. Yes, so he is the author of Doraemon. Have, have you heard before Doraemon? I, I think most of us know, okay, who is Doraemon and Lopita. Uh, so, uh, this famous character is created by Fujiko F. Fujio. So he is wearing a beret. Yes. So it means that artists, film director, so they will, they normally there like to wear beret because it's like a fashion. It's a symbol of art. Okay. So, okay. The next one is a different, uh, is different category. Military beret. Okay, military beret. Okay, beret is used widely in military, like in army. Okay, soldier. Ah, uh, soldier. You can see some soldier. So they also wear beret. Okay, because it's quite, uh, how to say, uh, not very hot. Uh, so it's for military. Yes, so, okay. Okay, that's me, lah, okay, and my friends. Okay, so beret are worn as part of the uniform of many military and police units across the world. Okay, so this one is beret. Okay, all right. So this one is for military use. Okay, military and police unit across the world. Okay, next. Ah, this one. Okay, this one is very famous world, Second World War hero. Okay, Second World War hero. Okay, let's see. Ah, the Black Beret was made famous by Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery. Okay, Bernard Montgomery. Okay, who is he? She is the Second World War general. Okay, he is the uh, he was general from the Allied. So. He defeated the Nazi German. Uh, so he made the Black Beret become famous. Okay, this is Bernard uh, Montgomery. So that after after him, so a lot of military general they wear beret. Okay. Okay, next. Okay, so the third passcode. Okay, what is the third passcode? Okay, the third passcode is 
beret okay beret okay so drop it down beret okay okay next okay next war bonnet all right war bonnet okay let's guess okay war bonnet okay okay what okay what continent okay what continent is it what continent okay what continent anyone can tell me what continent this is what continent not country ah. what continent okay what continent like a ah? what continent which continent is Asia, not Asia. It's very far from Asia. Asia again, not Asia lah. It's it's another another part of the group. Okay, if north, north, north what? Anyone can tell me north, north. Okay, America. Yes, is North America. Okay, North America. Okay, North America. Correct, North America. So, what? What are the countries in North America? Okay, what are the countries? What are the countries? Okay, all right. So I think I just show you. Okay, the country is. The first one is Canada. The second one is US. Yes, correct. US. Okay, US. And then the third one is Mexico. Very good. Okay, so this one is war bonnet. Okay, so okay, so don't expect me to wear this war bonnet. I don't have. Seriously, I don't have. Okay. So I just introduced on it. Okay, so war bonnet is a feather headgear traditional worn by male leader of native of North America who have earned a place of great respect in their tribe. Okay, this is this is in North America native. Okay, so this one is war bonnet. So originally, war bonnet was sometimes worn into battle, but it is now primarily used for ceremony occasions. Uh, so do that because today there's no war anymore. So they use for some ceremony. Okay. So Native American they use eager feathers as the most significant part of the war or of the war bonnet to represent honor and respect. Okay, so this one is war bonnet. Okay. Oh, this one war bonnet. I, I don't have lah. Okay, I cannot show you. Okay, I wish I have. Okay. So this one is war bonnet. So now I will introduce five headgear so which is usama uh, yugion war bonnet beret and udeng okay so there are some honorable mentions means that some famous headgear okay the first one deer stalker uh, deer stalker okay deer stalker is from united kingdom okay uh, so this one when we saw, when we see this uh, headgear, we straight away will think of a character. Do you know who is Sherlock Holmes? Sherlock Holmes. Do you know? He's a detective. He's a fictional detective. Ah, Fu Er Mosi, Sherlock Holmes. Okay, so because it become a is a icon feature, it become an iconic feature of Sherlock Holmes. So normally detective they will wear this deer stalker lah, or because of the influence of Sherlock Holmes. Okay, deer stalker. Okay, it's from uh, UK. Yeah, Sherlock Holmes. Okay, the second one, non la, or we call it conical head. Okay, this one is yeah, like this one. It's from Vietnam. Okay, Vietnam. Yeah, normally is is for female okay vietnamese female okay uh, non -la. okay the third one kappa okay kappa is is very look is look like song kok la, okay but is there's some um, uh, a bit 
uh, how to say it, different a bit different okay it's from tuki okay tuki so this one is kappa and okay do you know uh, who is he he is the founding father of modern tuki okay the karma uh karma and the uh, so he is wearing kappa okay the last one the last but not least is tengolok tengolok okay please guess student where does it come from you sure no one you definitely no one okay tengolok is from what country anyone can tell me tengolok from what country uh, no, 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 not Tuki. Tuki is uh, the previous one. Yes, Jonathan. Malaysia, Ryan, Malaysia. Hong Xuan, Malaysia. Wei Si, Malaysia. Yes, it's our Malaysian traditional headgear, okay? Yeah. The, okay, the, the famous icon is Hang Tua. Uh, Hang Tua, okay, he is wearing Tenggolok. And do you still remember during Olympic? Tokyo Olympic, the opening ceremony. So our our contingent, okay, our contingent of athletes, okay, the male athletes. So they are wearing tenggolok, okay, because tenggolok is our country symbol, ah, tenggolok. So all the uh, male athletes, all the all the sport person there wear tenggolok, okay. So please remember, this is our national traditional headgear. All right. Okay, so still got eight minutes. So let us have some questions. Now it's question time. Okay, so boys and girls, prepare a pencil and a piece of paper to write down your point. Okay, I'll give you 10 questions. Okay, very simple. Okay, to uh, let you revise. Okay, what, uh, what the we have learned today. Okay, the first one. Okay, ready? Uh? Okay, if you're ready, you press one. Press one. Okay, press one. Okay, yes. Okay, ready. Okay, so let's start number one. Okay, five points. Okay, war bonnet is the traditional headgear of of which American native? Which American native? South, North, East, West. Okay, what's your answer? South, North, East, West, South America, North America, East American, West American. Which one? Five points. Okay, anyone can tell me? Write your answer in the chat box. Which part of American? Yes, Hong Xuan, North, North, okay, North, okay, good, North. So if North American native, okay, the war bonnet. Okay, the black beret was once considered the national cap of what country? Okay, what country? Okay, tell me what country? Okay, second question, 10 points. Oh, yes. Okay, yes, correct. French. Okay, the answer is French. Okay, so 10 points. Okay, you are given 10 points. So you take down our points. Huh? Later, I'll ask you how many points you have earned. Okay, question number three, 10 points again. Okay, what headgear is the traditional Headgear of Balinese meal. Okay, what headgear? Okay, anyone know the answer? Question number three. Okay, what headgear is the traditional headgear of Balinese meal? Yes, Udang. Udang, Udang, yes, Udang. Okay, have to 
is a udeng. Okay. All right. So answer is udeng. Uh, udeng is the traditional headgear of Balinese meal. Very good. Okay. 10 point questions again. Okay. Yugyeon is worn by who? By what national? During practicing Confusion traditional uh, tradition. Okay. Yugyeon is worn by what national during practicing Confucian tradition today? Yeah, question number four. Yes, we see Korean. Yes, Hong Xuan, Korean. Yes, very good. Korean, Koreans. Okay, yes. So the answer is Korean. Okay, so how many points you have? I think got more than 20 points, huh? Okay, question number five. Ah, this question is 20 point. Wu Sama was worn by government official in the Imperial China, particularly what dynasties? What and what dynasty? They got two dynasty. Two dynasty. Okay, what dynasty? Oh, Jun An. Song and Ming, yo, the first, yes, correct. Song and Ming, Song and Ming. Okay, Song, not song, uh, not the, the, not singing song. Song, okay. Song and Ming dynasties. Okay, very good. Okay, twenty points. Uh, if you correct, you can, you have twenty points. Yeah. So this handsome soldier is wearing a. Okay. The soldier is wearing a what headgear is it? Okay, the soldier is wearing a yes, yeah. Okay, correct. Yes. Okay, beret. Yes, beret, beret. Okay, beret. All right, beret. Hong Xuan. Yes, beret. All right. Okay. Okay, question number seven. Okay, tell me the name of this headgear. Okay, which one? Uh? Okay, this one. Okay, tell me. Okay, this one. Okay, tell me what is the headgear, the name of this headgear. Okay, this one. Why this? Wusuo. Wusuo. Okay, the answer is. Yes, Usamao. Okay, Usamao. All right. Yeah, this one is Usamao. Okay, next. Okay, tell me the name of this headgear. Okay, look at. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Not this one. Okay, look. Uh, this one. Okay, this one. Okay, this one. This one, this one, this one. This one. Okay, different one. Not Usama again. Not Usama. This one. Okay. Okay, look at my head. Okay, tell me the name of this headgear. Yes, okay. Yugyeon. Yes, okay. Yugyeon. Correct. Okay, very simple. Uh, all simple ones. Okay, Yugyeon. Okay, the last question number nine. Okay, second last question. Okay, Hang Tua is wearing a what? Okay, 10 point. Hang Tua is wearing a... Hang Tua is wearing a... Okay, this is our national uh, traditional headgear. Hang Tua is wearing a... Not, not Udeng, not Udeng. Udeng is more, uh, Udeng quite similar to this one, okay, but not Udeng. Yes, Dengolok, okay, Dengolok, uh, Dengolok. I have to spell correctly, okay, Dengolok, okay, Dengolok. Okay, they, they have different names, uh. you can call Tanjak or Dengolok, okay. All right, so this is ours. Okay, the last question, last question, last, last, last questions. Okay, what is your favorite headgear? 
Okay, so today I will introduce nine headgears. Uh, so uh, out of these nine headgear, what is your favorite headgears and why? Okay, you can write in the chat box. Tell me what is your favorite headgear. You can say my favorite headgear is wool bonnet because it look cool. Or you can say my favorite headgear is Usama because my dream is to be a government official. Something like this, okay? All right, tell me what is your favorite headgear and its reason, okay? Why do you like this headgear? Okay, I give you one more minute. One minute, okay? You think about it. You think, okay, what is your favorite headgear? Ah, uh, Tengolo, Kappa, Deerstalker, Wobone, Nonla, uh, Udeng, Yugion, Usama, Beret. Okay, so Cookie, she say, my favorite is Beret because it's pretty. Yeah, uh, it's pretty. Okay, it's fashion. Okay, Hong Xuan, dear stalker, because I think it's more fashion and stylish. Jonathan, the Golok, because it looks formal and handsome. Wow. Because it was cute. Okay, it was cute. Oh, Tan Ka Xuan, my favorite is Beret because my mission is to be an artist. Okay, good answer. Okay, a lot of answer. Okay, dear stalker, it looks cool. Okay, from Anjun An. Usama, because it's, it was cool. Okay, all right. So this, okay, before I stop my lesson, okay. So please go, please don't go first. Huh? All right, so attendance. Okay, so you have to remember. Okay, so please fill up your attendance before you leave. Okay, remember the three passcode. Uh, what are the three passcode? Uh, okay, just remember hard headgear and what? Uh, and uh, you can think beret and what? Okay, uh, so what is the passcode? Okay, you try to find out. Uh, okay, all right, so today I shall stop my lesson here. So there is the end of my lesson, and last but not least. I wish all of you happy Mid Autumn Festival. Zhong Chiu Jie Kuai Le. All right, I'll see you. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you for the interesting lesson, Mr. Liu. So, once again, before you leave, remember to like our Easy Learning Web Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So remember to fill in your attendance form. You can do this by copy and paste the link into your web browser or simply scan the QR code on the screen. Our next session will be on the 4th October 2021 from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. The topic is Iconic Fruit from Around the World by Miss Yvonne Pan from SJKC Yuk Kwan Para. Our moderator will be Miss Sharon Wong from SK Nanga Babai Sarawak. 九月二十一日,星期二,那就是明天,下午四点至五点,我们有华语写作课,题目是来,我们一起去走走。授课老师是来自柔佛新山宽柔小学的环。可心老师助教是来自柔佛新山服饰小学的胡慧荣老师 9月24日星期五晚上8點至9點 
Satu kelas didik hero akan diadakan pada 24 September 2021 hari Jumaat pukul 8 malam. Kami akan mengadakan kelas bertajuk makanan tradisional dan kebudayaan. Penceramah ialah Cikgu Beh Sunin dari SJKC Pitek di Bong Tebal, Pulau Pinang. Juru acara ialah Cikgu Tan Ko An dari SJKC Jinjang Tengah Satu, Kuala Lumpur. That's all for today. Thank you and see you in the next lesson which is on the 4th October 2021 and it will be from 4pm to 5pm again. So that's all. Thank you. Bye.